Hey everybody, this is JD Gaming back today with a deck profile of Witchcrafter. So it's been a few years since we last worked on the strategy on the channel, but I've been kind of playing it on and off in the background. Master Duel is actually a pretty fun experience because the list is very similar to OCG, where we have a lot more very powerful tech cards that work very well with Witchcrafters at less restricted quantities than in the TCG. And of course, we ended up getting Magnificent Mavens, which I originally thought just a polymerization and then a fusion monster weren't the best things. Like, this could have been a Magicalized Fusion or something on theme instead, right? But to give you an idea, last time when we featured this strategy, we played things like Pot of Extravagance, and early on in Master Duel, I played this as my deck of choice in a format where you could not use any extra deck for a short event. And now here we are actually turboing out this Fusion Monster turn one in almost every game and capitalizing on up to all three of Witchcrafter Vice Madam's abilities every single turn, because much like the other Witchcrafter cards, she is awesome at snowballing you advantage that ultimately will hopefully overwhelm your rogue opponents. Realistically, this deck is still too fragile, I think, to be a top contender. You could definitely take it to like locals or otherwise have fun with it on a casual level, or of course something like Master Duel. And in case you've never seen this deck before, this is going to be a let's build as always, where I'll go through and build the deck from the ground up, giving you highlights as to what the cards do, of course, it's going to be quick details on some things. As you read the cards and play around with them, you'll most likely pick up on some new interactions as you go, but that's part of the fun with it as well. But for now, let's go without any further ado and build Witchcrafter. The first step in building a deck is to establish a theme and to build a core that supports the theme's goals. And since we're playing Witchcrafter, we have to take a look first, of course, at our two main boss monsters, Witchcrafter Madame Vare and Witchcrafter Heine. Effectively, these cards have a pair of abilities where you get a Dark Ruler No More as a quick effect by discarding a spell card, or a Zodiac Drydent-style target and destroy effect, both of which are extremely powerful for controlling the board. On top of that, Vare has an ability to reveal a bunch of spells from your hand, even if they're not witchcrafters, and then power boost any one of your spellcasters that's battling once in a turn by a thousand attack and defense for every differently named spell you reveal. But that's the basic idea, a quick effect board blank, as well as a destroy one card. And then Heine has a continuous ability that protects all your other witchcrafters and other spellcasters from being targeted by card effects as well. That's all the same, but what's updated is we now have a brand new fusion monster we're playing a couple copies of called Witchcrafter Vice Madam. This card is insane. She's a level 8 dark monster with 2700 attack, 2800 defense. She needs any one witchcrafter monster plus any spellcaster monster, and she has three different abilities that are all a hard ones per turn, but you basically get to use each one of these effects once per turn in any order. So when a spell card or spell effect or a non-fusion monster spellcaster's effect is activated owned by either player, you activate this quick effect in response to it as long as your opponent doesn't interrupt you with some of their own responses in the chain. You choose one of these three abilities, the only restriction is you can't use the same effect the same turn. But you're able to either destroy a card on the field, much like Heine, but stronger without targeting, special summon a level 6 or lower witchcrafter monster from your hand or deck, and very interesting to note with this, we don't have a level 6 yet, so that'll probably come at some point, and you have an option to add a witchcrafter spell or trap from the graveyard to your hand, and that's really powerful because although the witchcrafter spells, as we'll get to, have a recursion ability, you either get the recursion or the spell's main effect, and this lets you buy bypass this because it lets you recycle a card that you've already played. And so because you're able to, even on the first turn before your opponent has any cards in play, get a free card from your graveyard and another one from your deck, you can generate a ton of advantage with this card, especially because then you have quick effects that will allow these guys to trigger again during your opponent's turn. So how do we bring this card out? We're starting off with three copies of Witchcrafter Confusion Confession. This is just polymerization as long as you are using a Witchcrafter monster. Unfortunately, there's not a ton of really good fusions that you could summon off of this, but there is one that we will get you in the tech section of this deck. Other than that, it has the ability to recycle itself from your graveyard if you control a Witchcrafter during your end phase, as long as you've not used its main effect this turn. That's a common effect on all the Witchcrafter spells. This thing I decided to play three of, because at first the idea was play one and send this to the grave with Schmitta, and then copy it with Jenny, and then we'll explain that in a second. But I realized it's not as consistent as if you just play three, plus you have more follow-up. This I just felt was the most comfortable and then we're going to get to our bread and butter combo monsters, the first of which is our level 4 Witchcrafter Schmietta. Just to note, these are all spellcaster monsters with different stats, they have different attributes, they're all the different
different elements and then they have different levels as well so theoretically you could potentially place something weird like a small world in here but effectively two things this is going to represent all the witchcrafter monsters the first is the same across all of them you tribute it as a quick effect during either main phase and then discard a spell as cost then special summon a witchcrafter monster from your deck except a copy of itself that lone fire blossom like quick effect is the same across all the small witchcrafters which makes this deck very consistent and then the graveyard effect it has as a second one is unique depending on which monster so you banish it from your graveyard as an ignition effect in order to have in this case for schmitta send any witchcrafter card from your deck to the graveyard except a copy of schmitta and each of these effects is once per turn so unlike the spells where you get a recovery or the main effect you're actually going to get both abilities with your witchcrafter monsters and the cool thing is if you activate schmitta's effect in the grave or on the field either one or potentially both of them can trigger your vice madam's effect because it simply needs to be a non-fusion witchcrafter monster who's activating her ability or a spell card or effect so very easy to trigger the fusion monster's effect multiple times with even a single witchcrafter monster or spell in this deck and schmetta just gets everything started for us because our next monster of note is going to be three copies of witchcrafter jenny i used to play two copies of this in the last build but she became a lot more important now that we're trying to establish a fusion monster as consistently as possible. She's a level one monster, which comes in very handy thanks to our extra deck. Her unique effect in the graveyard is banish her in order to banish a spell, witchcrafter spell from your grave alongside her. You activate Jenny's effect, the monster effect, as if it were that witchcrafter spell. It is important to note that part because of something that we'll discuss later, but effectively you copy a witchcrafter spell and get either two uses out of it, or you use something like your Schmetta who's able to yard anything for you, and then now you're able to use use Jenny's ability in order to get that effect for maybe the first time, but uh, she does leave the graveyard just like Schmetta in order to do that, which makes things a little bit trickier sometimes to fusion summon with, but the general idea is going to be summon Schmetta, get her into the grave, and then bring out Jenny, get Schmetta's effect to send confusion to the grave if you haven't already received that card in your hand or something, and then once Jenny ends up in the graveyard, as long as you have another monster, you could go ahead and copy the fusion from your graveyard, and that's the easiest way I found to consistently bring out vice madam if you don't just draw an amazing hand that gets you there all on its own but three jenny is a lot more consistent in this strategy because there's a specific spell we're trying to get and then we play some one ofs here but Tuar is basically going to banish herself to do a mini allure of darkness draw one card and then send a witchcrafter card from your hand to grave if you fail to do so you banish your whole hand but this gets you a free draw quite often and similarly, we have Pottery, who is level 2. Pottery has a unique kind of clause where you need to have no cards in your hand, and if you do, banish her from the grave to add any Witchcrafter card from grave to hand. But this card I found combos quite nicely with something like Batoir, or just giving you materials for a fusion summon. I've used her way more since the introduction of Vice Madam compared to ever in the past. Because before, it was just, oh, they're different names, you play one of each, you get different traits like attributes, stats, whatever. But now I'm actually using these guys way more often, and I really do love that. And then we have Witchcrafter Adele as well. This I went back and forth on. Last time I was, of course, playing it. Off camera, I was kind of considering cutting it, I tested without it. But then I realized there's some nice synergies with this. This card and some of the cards we'll play in our tech section. This is a level 5 monster, so she does not have the summon one from your deck effect. Instead, her quick effect during any phase is discard a spell to special summon a witchcrafter from your hand, so that helps you free up your hand of boss monsters that may be trapped there. And then you can have an ignition effect, not from the grave, but tribute her to send her to the grave in order to target a witchcrafter in your grave, except Edel, revive it, and you can only use each of these effects once per turn. So basically, get rid of bricks in your hand, put them on the field, and you're monster reborn and that comes in handy because of something that we will be playing in this deck as well so oftentimes these are your tech monsters that you will be bringing out off of your jenny or your schmetta whichever one is second in that sequence and then you're basically able to hand fix hand fix in a different way with a specific name or get your hand fixed by getting something out of it or just build your board further so that's what all these cards do and even with this card technically being a brick in some ways it's a little bit easier to deal with nowadays because she's just a monster you can just fuse with this and of course, you can just revive whatever you fuse for the Vice Madam with Adele as well, which gives you a little bit more flexibility in rebuilding your board. From there, we're going to jump into the Witchcrafter spells. 
We have three copies of Creation. This is basically just a rota for the strategy. Add any Witchcrafter from your deck to hand without any stipulation, other than that cuts off the recycle of that card for the turn. Then we have three copies of Witchcrafter Holiday, which is Monster Reborn. This card's insane because it lets you bring back any Witchcrafter monster, and Vice Madam does not have any restrictions on her summoning conditions. You can bring her back from the graveyard once you've used her as well, so you can even like fuse her into a, like a different monster or make another play, like a Link play, and then just bring her back. Or, of course, if she dies, you could revive her that way as well. So Holiday becomes even stronger now that we have an extremely powerful monster that is worth reviving. Then we play three copies of Witchcrafter Unveiling, a quick play spell that you can shotgun in situations like the draw phase, and then that'll let you special summon a Witchcrafter from your hand, and if you do, your opponent is no longer able to respond with any cards or effects to your Spellcaster monster effects for the rest of the turn, which makes you safe from hand traps, and that is huge because getting Ash Blossomed in this deck sucks. The fact that you have a quick effect for all of the tribute summon another guy is actually decent because you can dodge things like Effect Failure, Imperm, and Book of Moon, cards that would target you and have to have you remain on the field. But in the case of something like Ash Blossom, you can get screwed over unless you play something like this, so that's why we like this. Plus it of course helps you unbrick in case you draw too many big guys. And then the last Witchcrafter spell is Witchcrafter Bice Street, which is a continuous spell, but it works very similarly to the others. While it's on the field, the first time each Witchcrafter monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, it doesn't die. That's for every single different monster you have. And it has an effect where if it's in the graveyard, instead of recycling itself to your hand, it simply goes back to your field, where it's able to set up that protection effect across the board. So still very powerful. This is one of your best picks to send with Schmetta if you don't need her effect for combo utility. You could just go for this in order to strengthen your board. And of course, I've talked about the other Witchcrafter spells in the old video. You can check those. But basically, I decided to cut all the other ones like Collaboration, Draping, just because I didn't feel they were strong enough to warrant play in the main deck right now. There may be a time in the future that we could play them, but basically when we got the fusion spell, that became another Witchcrafter name that we can recycle every turn, so that automatically made it so we could consider dropping one of the spells, and then with them being one-ofs for the rest of the cards, I decided I don't really want scroll or any of those, so basically we just end on by Street. Now it's time to talk about all the non-engine tech in the main deck, and then we'll go to the extra deck. It's in this familiar format this time, just because I don't think any of these are necessarily mandatory to play. It's just the way I decided to go about the strategy. And of course, if you go to something like Master Duel, these things will change as well. So we play one copy of Reasoning because it's limited in the TCG. This card is, of course, bonkers in a strategy where you literally have levels one through eight and your opponent is going to be left guessing, what do I hit? Because even if they send something to the graveyard, you still get a graveyard ability. So there's really no losing with this card unless you happen to hit a non-witchcrafter monster right off of the first hit, which very rarely does happen. But overall, very powerful spell card. You play the maximum number of this, and again, same as a few years ago, if this card ever comes back to three in the TCG, I'm cramming them right into this deck and then playing around with this even more, even if I wasn't playing around with it at the time. Now, something different. So last time I said, oh, we don't play Magician Souls because it's risky. If you lose your two cards for cost from your hand or field and then you get Ash, you're kind of stuck and you're sad, and that is still true. But the reason we don't play Extravagance anymore is, first of all, a bit more of an importance on the extra deck. You could just play three copies of Vice Madam, of course, and reduce any risk of losing all copies, and that's still a viable way. But I do like the flexibility of Patois or some other text in here. And Magician Souls is specifically important in this strategy because of its summoning condition and the fact that it is a spellcaster on field. So if you've never seen Souls, you can send a high level, six or higher, spellcaster from your deck to the graveyard as cost to activate one of two effects. And in this deck, since you're not playing Dark Magicians, you're basically just summoning souls from your hand for free. That means they are a spellcaster body on the field that is one of the two monsters you need for your witchcrafter monster, which is one of the big pushes for this over extravagance. And then you can send your usually witchcrafter spells from your hand or field to the graveyard, up to two of them, and draw that many cards at resolution. Because that is a cost, it is a little risky, but we can mitigate some of the problems with that for this deck. And so I just felt the cost benefit analysis of this card is a lot more in favor of playing this right now because the spellcaster body is much more valuable than it was before. So that's why we play Souls. You can still play Extravagance, but I really do think Souls is a lot more powerful now. Then we play three copies of Foolish Burial Goods. This is basically Schmetta for all your spells, since honestly, I usually end up sending spells to the grave with Schmetta unless I happen to need something like Jenny or something to revive off Holiday. And so we play one copy of Metal Foes Fusion as well, because you can send this to the grave with Foolish Burial Goods, or you can discard it at any point in your main phase. You just shuffle it back into your deck, draw one card. So free card for a free draw. I 
only play one because I don't really want to draw into multiples of this as a hard ones per turn. And realistically, you may end up seeing it more than once in a game anyway. Then we play the replacement for the Gamma package, basically. Gamma was amazing. If that ever comes back, definitely play it. Three copies of Magician's Restage, which is a continuous spell that has two effects. One is while it's face up on the field, one time only, you can revive a level three or lower spellcaster from your graveyard. You do target it, special summon it. That's really strong because you can use that in order to bring back Jenny. Go for something like Relinquished Anima so you keep a spellcaster monster on field, and that will let you summon Vice Madam a lot more easily. The other ability of Restage is if you send it to the graveyard for any reason, could be Reasoning, Witchcraft or Discard, whatever, you're able to go and search a Magician continuous spell from deck to hand, except Restage. So I just play the one copy of Right Hand Blank, the first spell your opponent plays, without even responding to it. It's a continuous blank that one card, and so if your opponent doesn't know this card, they mess up, they could play Super Poly into this, it would still get negated. You could play Magician's Left Hand to negate a trap in a similar way, but I just feel getting a spell negation is a lot more powerful in general, especially in the first game of a match. Sometimes you do draw this directly, but if that happens, it ends up being either a discard or an end board piece, so it ends up being pretty strong regardless. And then the last four in the main deck are basically three copies of Triple Tactics Talent. If you are going first and you don't get hand trapped, then you could just get rid of this thing, honestly. Summon Vice Madam, recur advantage that way, and I find you don't really lose out too much if you end up having to discard this. So it's basically super flexible. If you play Talents, you're happy. If you discard it and you go off, you're happy. So no problem there. And the last card is a Called by the Grave, just because since Ash Blossom does annihilate this strategy, playing the one copy of it, especially since it is a spell, I think it is just like a safe one of pick. And then for the extra deck, I briefly mentioned Relinquished Anima, but basically this is a spellcaster that needs a level one monster except a token. So very flexible with Jenny or with Souls. If you play like Effect Failure or something, you could play this card as well for that. He points up, and if your opponent happens to be putting a monster in their column two or four, and this is in your extra monster zone, you could just steal it and then do the regular relinquished attack absorb effect. So very solid removal option. But if nothing else, I just love the fact that this thing is a link one spellcaster that uses a level one. You can restage your Jenny back or holiday your Jenny back and do this kind of a play in order to fuse this spellcaster into the Vice Madam. So relinquished anima comes in really clutch a lot of times. Then this is the spicy tech I like playing. I was wondering, where do I play this? Because I'm not playing branded and you realistically don't really want to play this in something like Heroes or whatever. Guardian Chimera is a hilarious card that just needs any three monsters with different names to fusion summon, and the materials have to come at least one copy from your hand and field, but uh, it just so happens that if you read the copy of Witchcrafter Confusion Confession, this is literally polymerization for witchcrafters. It can use your hand and field as materials, and as long as you're using a witchcrafter, you can summon a chimera. So this makes a very powerful follow-up play where you're able to just blow up a lot of your opponent's cards, draw and refresh, and the cool thing is, between Holiday, Jenny copying Holiday, you're actually able to rebuild your board that you chimera into in the first place oftentimes, so this is just free power if you're going second. And then we play for the last Link 1 here, Link Karibo. Sometimes instead of Anima as another spellcaster, just having that attack control is pretty nice, and the fact that it can come back from the graveyard is sometimes relevant because you could basically have two Link monsters with this card alone. The next six cards are actually all six of the Charmer monsters. The general idea is you play all of the attributes in this deck, and they all have the same ability where you're able to revive your opponent's monster of that matching attribute, so that helps you climb. Because they are spellcasters, they fulfill the requirements for bringing out your Selene, Queen of the Master Magicians, and you're probably going to have three spells either on your field with Restage or just sent to your graveyard that'll come back later, so this of course lets you revive a spellcaster monster once per turn as a quick effect as long as it can go in defense position, and that helps you make a link climb into Axis Code Talker. And then the last two cards I played in the extra deck are IP Mascarena because it's just generically useful, and we usually go into a Nightmare Unicorn with that card because you could discard a spell with this, and then you end up getting it back anyway as long as you have a Witchcrafter in play, which will probably have Vice Madam. So that's the last part of our extra deck. And with that, we've successfully built Witchcrafters. Special thanks to anybody who watched the video in its entirety. Now let's jump into the deck profile. Starting with the monsters, we have one copy of Witchcrafter Madame Ver, one Heine, one Edel, then we have three copies of Witchcrafter Schmietta, one copy of Petoir, one Pottery, and three copies of Witchcrafter Jenny. And that's it for the Witchcrafters. Then we have three copies of Magician's Souls, and that is all the monsters that we play in our main deck. For spells, we play one copy of Called by the Grave, three copies of Foolish Burial Goods, three copies of Magician's Restage, one Magician's Right Hand, one Metal Foes Fusion, one Reasoning, three copies of Triple Tactics Talent, one Witchcrafter by Street, three Witchcrafter Confusion Confession, three Witchcrafter Creation, 
three Witchcrafter Holiday, and three copies of Witchcrafter unveiling for a 40 card main deck. Extra deck, we play two copies of Witchcrafter Vice Madam, along with one copy of Guardian Chimera as our fusions. For Link 1s, we play Link Karibo and Relinquished Anima. Then for Link 2s, we play one of each of the Charmers, so Asa, Dark, and Iria, Hida, Lina, and Win. And then we play IP Mascarena as well to round out the Link 2s. For Link 3s, we play Nightmare Unicorn and Selene, Queen of the Master Magicians, and our lone Link 4 is Access Code Talker. I had a lot of fun building and testing this deck for you guys. Of course, I did it in the TCG, and the main reason for that is because the Magnificent Mavens cards here are super cheap in the real world, although when you add three Confusion Confession and two Vice Madam to a Master Duel deck, it does get quite pricey with them all being ultra rares. But in that format, of course, you have three copies of Reasoning. Grass looks greener if you want to play that, so uh, there are some fun things you could do. Plus, two Gamma still exists there. That's really fun, especially because Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon just came out as well, but uh, in either format, I think if you're looking for just a fun, casual kind of strategy that can really snowball the advantage and pick up on speed once you get going, this is quite a fun deck that I would recommend playing around with. Thank you guys very much for watching. This is JD Gaming. Hope you guys enjoyed as always, and I'll see you guys next time.